Hey guys, welcome to DR Radio. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's the one. It's not DR TV. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Um, welcome to DR Radio. Um, we're on episode two. Yeah. Um, the second second part of our radio style and stuff and that. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Hope you're all, all well. Um, today we're going to be talking about... Um, <laughs> the rise and fall of Capcom. Yeah, they've they've fallen pretty far in recent years. Yeah, they did big time. Um, so yeah, we we're going to talk about all the, the all the great games that Capcom used to do, and and uh, look at them nowadays. <laughs> yeah, they, they haven't got the greatest reputation in the last couple of years. Mm, really, because of a few questionable decisions. Let's yeah. say. Yeah. Um, so, what's um, your first one? Yeah. Well, okay, well, many RPG fans, everyone will know I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy. Back in the early 90s, Capcom did a RPG series called Breath of Fire. Brilliant game, you could turn into a dragon, it, it borrowed a lot from Final Fantasy. And in the last, I don't know, 10 years, it, it just sort of has faded away. Number 5 really, really... How many did they actually get up to? Five. Five of them. Yeah. The first three were pretty good. Four was good, but a bit iffy. And five, oh my god, five. I can't even tell you how badly five stunk. How disappointed. (laughs) I was so disappointed. I mean, it it just took everything that was great about the series and threw it out the window. Yeah. And then, last year, they announced the Breath of Fire 6. But get this, it's only for mobiles... (laughs) <laughs> and well PC gaming is that where Capcom's leading? mobiles? <laughs> apparently so I was so so disappointed with it no it's, it, it's just not going to work I mean I t- I'll tell you um, it's like I spoke to you earlier the game that kind of disappointed me and I feel like they were lacking because um, they bring out so many of them and then they bring out the in the newest one, um, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Was it 3? I'm pretty sure yeah, it was 3. Yeah, 3 was the most recent. And, um, yeah, I felt like could, they could have done more with that and the storyline, what, what they were doing on it. It, it. just felt like they, they, they wanted to get get it out to the market straight away on the on the date that it was supposed to be and didn't finish it. Well, it was like I was saying to you earlier, when they released that and then six months later they released Ultimate Marvel yeah. vs. Capcom 3. There was probably a quite a lot of pissy fans from that. See, that yeah. really annoys me when they do that. I mean, um, like you said in the past videos, I, I like um, Devil May Cry. So, them bringing in Donne and Virgil and Trish was pretty awesome. Yeah. But, like I said, the game was lacking a lot. Um... I could have done a lot better. Mm. I, I mean, I played all, all the other Marvel vs. Capcoms, and I thought that was brilliant. But number three just was lacking, lacking so much. And I had the original one on the, um, the PS One, which I thought was brilliant. Yeah, loved it. I mean, they, 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 they it's a thing with Capcom nowadays. They, they, they know. They do their game, but they make it so short. It's like less now than it was back then. Yeah. Back then, the, the gameplay was just non-stop. And I remember, it's like like I said to you earlier, like they had, we had a, like I oh, big fan of Mega Man, Mega, Mega Man, Man like all the way. Mega Man just to me was amazing, best game ever. In, on the NES, I remember when I was a little kid and this player just get frustrated. Yeah, they're, especially they're... with the especially. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, like you know the fading bricks. Yeah, where you had to make that jump to the different blip bricks before they like faded away, and you had to oh, do it. And you had to do it over this like I think it was over this um, water. You're not meant to go in, and you had to do it all the way through the level, and it's like. Done my head in so badly, but uh, you know, like Mega Man, they, they don't make that anymore. No, like, I remember when they did Mega Man on the N64, that sucked. Well, was... I did not like that. Did you ever play Mega Man Legends, the, the 3D one they did, where he had his helmet off and he had his like his yeah, yeah, brown yeah. hair? Yeah, 
and it was actually pretty decent. It was decent, yeah. I admit. Not quite as original, more like an RPG Mega Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, I did like that. And one of the other ones I was a fan of was Mega Man Zero. Yeah, yeah. And his red armor with his plasma sword. Yeah, yeah. I thought because he actually had his own game series. It was yeah, yeah. Mega Man X. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I liked it as well on on the, um, the SNES. The Mega Man's on there, and I don't know. They were, yeah, I liked them. And they just they don't do it anymore. They don't do it like that anymore. Because I think the the person who made Mega Man, like most people, he's actually left Capcom now, started his own company. Yeah. So it's unlikely we're going to be seeing one anytime and soon. Well, I don't know if you know, but on the Xbox, a lot of um, fans actually made. A follow up from the old Mega Man. Really? Yeah. It was actually, um, it was done out, the music was almost like, sound like yeah, Mega Man, well, the storyline fitted in from the last one. They'd done such a perfect job on it. It's wow. just basically a game, um, big fans of the game back then, and just, they all just came together and made that game. That's, that's cool. Man. And you know, like the old, um, Nintendo casing and stuff like that, where yeah. The old drawing style pictures of them where they didn't actually look like the character. Yeah, that was they cool. They did it in that style as well like, to make it look like the whole the whole Ned's concept sort of thing. It looked, it looked really good. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, okay, well, we're just going to take a little break now and we're going to treat you to another song. This is the main theme from Devil May Cry 3. Yeah, I like that one. We hope you enjoy. You might remember it from when he finally gets his devil trigger, flies down the tower. We might add, not DMC. <laughs> yeah, less said about that, the better. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, you'll see in a bit. Mm, take it easy. Enjoy the music. Bye. Bye. Okay, well, we hope you enjoyed that from Devil May Cry 3. Yep, one of my um, favourite games in Devil May Cry 3. Now, touching on the um, the subject of Devil May Cry, well, we were all disappointed as you were with DMC, the reboot. I mean, what in the blue hell were they thinking with that? I don't know. It's, um... I don't know, I just don't know why they... 
they surely must like know in their head that when they were planning on that, they knew that it wasn't going to go all the way as they would expect. <laughs> surely. I mean, beginning of this, Devil May Cry 4 sold four, four and a half something million copies. And Capcom weren't happy with it. They said, no, we are not happy with those figures. They wanted more. So they said, okay, let's reboot it and try again. And we've touched on this. You know how much the new one sold? 1.2 million. Yeah, no, no. Pathetic. I mean, it didn't even scratch anything what 4 made. Like you said, this, um, I think it was like Devil May Cry HD actually got more than the actual DMC itself. It outsold it. Yeah. It did. Um, yeah, and nah. I. I mean, we both knew as soon as it came out, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't work at all. It just, it just didn't work at all. I mean, I remember one of the chief guys from Capcom coming out, and they actually blamed Ninja Theory, the people who made it, for yeah. it being such a bad game. It was like they said, we're not gonna outsource these games to the West anymore. They're gonna make them in Japan again. Because of how badly Ninja Theory did on the game. But the thing is, they can't just blame Ninja Theory. They made that decision, Capcom made that decision to make it for other people to do it. They, they well, made Ninja Theory do it. So at the end of the day, it's on them more than it is on Ninja Theory. Well, they, they needed someone to blame. And they certainly weren't going to blame themselves. Well, and, well. But the best news that's come out of that is bombed. We're never going to hear from that Dante again. Anything regarding him, yeah. straight down the toilet. Out of the window. And the next Devil May Cry will be Devil May Cry 5. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you, do you think um, do you think that they're actually going to um, cover more Nero's storyline? or? I think when 5 comes out, it, I don't think Nero will be the main character again. No, but he will definitely be in it. And I think they finally will reveal who Nero actually is. I think personally they're going to keep it with Dante because how long that, how long people have been waiting for that Dante. It's they true. Like to play as in, they wouldn't like to play as another character. You think well, with all the bad publicity DMC got, if if fans just see a new trailer of Dante again, and the it original, a different person you're playing as, and just <laughs> it just rip it even more. Mm. You know, I, I think when five eventually does happen, it is going to sell by the truckload. So, and this hope Langdon, uh, Ruben Langdon plays as um, does the voice of Dante again. We do need him back. Yeah, I mean the new guy. I don't know who he is. I don't know who his name is. But my God, if you wanted Dante to sound like an overgrown chav, you you got yeah, one. So, yeah, he didn't. Like he, he didn't even really say much in in the new one at all. Like apparently he was quite quiet, and I was like, "Well, don't have a a voice actor for it." <laughs> Pretty much, if he if he if he's not saying much, you know, and, and it's like, "Oh, I don't give a shit about everything." It's like, "Well, why are you shooting at things? Why are you fighting? You obviously care for some reason." Yeah. So uh, yeah, all that bullshit, and Virgil and Don were never best friends. No, I mean. And this is. Uh, I know they sort of uh, saved it at the end with them fighting each other, which everyone knew was going to happen. Why would they reboot it anyway? They done comics. They did fucking a uh, TV show. Oh yeah. They yeah. did the fucking you know the, the the two great games, plus two, right? And then they think, oh, we made all that big legacy on DMC and um. All that lot, and uh, you know what? Let's get all that and roll it all up into a ball and just chuck it in the bin and do DMC. I think what one of the guys said was that people weren't responding to Dante anymore, and that they thought that the series was dated, and that they needed to change it up. No, they just needed to come up with a different story. Now they could have done our idea, the Devil May Cry Zero, with yeah, the Sparda story, Sparda, and how it all began and what happened and stuff. Or they could have done number five. Yeah, number five where um, it reveals more um, 
about obviously like you said Nero and, and stuff like that. Obviously not being um, playing as Nero but Dante and and all that lot. I mean I like number four, don't get me wrong, but like you said earlier, um you get to play as Dante when you get like up to um level twelve. I think it, it's about like twelve. That. And you get to play as Dante then. It's like, well, when you want to play as Dante, then do Nero. And, well, I would have just given him the option of either doing it as Dante, Being or, as Dante Nero. or Nero. Yeah. Not one and the other. But I didn't like the number three where you, like, you finally got the the um, the other edition where you play as Virgil. But when you play through it, you're um, <laughs> doing Dante's storyline still. Yeah. It's not actually Virgil's storyline. It's they just, just you. You play as him and do his moves. That's about it. And in the battles, it's just basically you fighting Virgil again, but he's coloured red, not yeah. blue. It's horrible. Uh, yeah, um, number five, I'm sure it'll happen eventually. Yeah. No, that wasn't announced at E3, obviously, if you guys watch E3 and stuff. Right. But, yeah. Should be pretty cool. I mean, um, only a little tiny thing, but like I said... Mega Man is pretty awesome. And I'm quite glad because um, I actually bring the Mega Man into Smash Brothers. That's, that's deep. Which I'm kind of looking forward to. Because it's funny because, you know, um, you know, when you get all the characters have their different moves when they press up and press down. Yeah. They, he actually has um, the bosses that he beats in the games. Oh, cool. He has the moves like the leaf attack or the, the needle attack and stuff like that. And... You don't change colour though. He stays no. the same colour. Well, I Which suppose is, they had to do do something. Exactly, but it's, it's still something I'm looking forward to. It should be pretty awesome. I will probably play as him a lot. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, another Capcom series I quickly want to touch on. I'm not sure if you've played this, but it's called Onimusha. It was just basically like Resident Evil, but in Japan you get swords instead of guns. Yeah. And you're fighting demons instead of zombies. Mm. Now all of them, everyone, all four games were just brilliant. Yeah. And they haven't done anything with Onimusha in what, 10 years now, I think it is. You never know, I mean, they, uh, there's some that are down back to old school. I mean, you'd think they'd have at least even done an HD collection of them. You would have thought so. But they haven't done that. No. And I'll tell you, the fourth game was just brilliant. Yeah. The last boss battle has you fighting the god of light himself. Yeah. And it's it's just an epic battle. It is. And it's a game series that sold well and they've done nothing with it. Like, yeah. yeah. Like you are sitting on money and you're doing nothing with it. You just don't seem to look at the figures. You just seem to just look at... Um, they just seem to always go for new stuff and not look back at the old stuff. Oh. That's what they should really focus on. I mean, some people hate it, some people don't hate it. Yeah, um, it's like Resident Evil. Ah, yeah. Yes. I'll tell you what, Resident Evil. Resident I think Evil. personally, number six was brilliant. And you, you, you also think number six. Was brilliant. I enjoyed We both played six. it together, didn't we? Yeah. And we thought it was brilliant. I didn't see what the problem no. with six was. I mean, people complained about the um, the quick time yeah, 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 yeah. sequences, mm. and that it wasn't old school Resident mm. Evil. But the thing is, they they can't keep doing old school Resident Evil. It's got yeah. a evolve it's got to move on if you want to do that play the old ones if you don't want to do it then just don't play it <laughs> it's the same people who complained about Final Fantasy when they removed stuff and made it more yeah. newer you, you can't keep living in the past you have to evolve with the times but that was like what 12 was it 12 12 12 the fighting system was different yeah but I liked that but that, that that's a story for another time <coughs> that's, yeah. that's square Resident Evil the people who moaned about six. Well, what are you moaning about, really? Yeah. Leon's campaign was the closest you were going to get to old school Resident Evil. Yeah, and uh, uh, to me personally, everyone always, the most people I spoke to always says Jake. Jake and his um, storyline was just brilliant. It was. It was good, but for me, because I liked the old school and I liked number two, I think I like. Leon's campaign more to me you see I quite like Jam Jake's campaign because it was different yeah, it, yeah. it reminded me of Nemesis with um, Eustonek chasing yeah, yeah, yeah. him and, and the fight at the end the big fight at the end with just him 
Right. The old fisticuffs. Fisticuffs. I mean, come on, he actually fights him with his fists. (laughs) When has anybody ever done that? Ever. That's brilliant. That that final scene where he gets him right in the jaw. And he's like... In the lava. Yeah, and also the... um, It's just... uh, I like. I just. I did like that fight scene. It was brilliant. <laughs> but um, it's also cool because um, we're still waiting on the the, the Resident Evil movie. Yeah, coming yeah. out that we, we will be watching without doubt. Number six. It's the final chapter, isn't it? The final one. Yeah, this is going to be the last one. Mm. Well, the last one with. With her in it. With Alice. Alice. Who by now is just in a redundant character she was only in the <laughs> movies because she's sleeping with the director <laughs> ouch <laughs> yeah I went there but, um, I don't care if it's low it's, they've been good films oh yeah they've I been good lie, films they have been good films and, 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 and I um, I think um, the person that played as Albert Wesker did actually a very very good job Sean Roberts brilliant and it's funny because the fight in sequence in the last film was exactly the same fight in sequence in Resident Evil 5 yeah, that was. Um, yeah, that went. That was perfect. Like, I love the bit where they charge him and he just turns his head, elbows, drops him, the elbow, chucks him to one side. There's nothing. <coughs> nah, I'm very looking forward to the new one. Yeah. Um. Hopefully they have some sort of bits from six put in somehow. And I am looking forward to Resident Evil Seven when they make yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that was announced at E3. No. No. So but, I think that would be a while yet before that comes. But yeah, they're probably going to backdate it for the next gen consoles yeah. now. But it will be brilliant. Yeah. I mean, like I said, all you nay haters, uh, fair enough. Uh, like I said, play, play the old ones. Yeah. But me and Sam think the person that number seven is going to be pretty good. I mean, if, you, if you're that dedicated to the old school Resident Evils, just, just keep playing them. Yeah. The series has to change. Yeah, like it, it, it can't follow in the same, same, same way. It's, it's most games that that that's carried on for so many years, right? They all change. You know, they, they, you know. Um, I, I think personally, one of one of the games that hasn't changed a lot. I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna go too much into it, but it's like Zelda. Yeah. It's that hasn't changed. A few things change, but it's pretty, bit, much but it's pretty much thing the same thing every time. But that's a different thing, subject anyway. But um, if things change, um, games change, and and they they if they want to add the way they want to do it, then do it. You just got to get used to it. I'm afraid. Exactly. As as much as Capcom have made mistakes, I think Resident Evil is one thing that is actually keep going strong. Yeah. I mean. It still sells. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're definitely looking forward to number, s- number seven without that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's our, that's our um, rant on Capcom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, right. Um, we're going to leave it there now. Yeah. So, um, as always, um, like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our channel, DR Television, 1987. No, I love it. Um, follow us on Twitter, um, oh. so Google Plus, oh. um, and that's about it. Yeah, we'll um, join you again next week for about another twenty minutes of talking and another <laughs> song. So yeah, hope you enjoy. And uh, as always, and from your hosts, the natural Carl B and, and Mr. Amazing Sam H. <laughs> hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next week for a and new as always only, only the, the strong, strong survive. survive you take care we'll see you next week see you later bye